Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here. In today's video, we're going to be covering everything that will be coming to Vigor in the upcoming Season 13. Currently, Season 13 is partially released to the partners in the preview belt, allowing us to show you guys a sneak peek of what is to come. So with no further delay, let's just get right into this. Starting off, we have one of the biggest pieces of new content that comes with every new season, and that's the new Seasonal Battle Pass. The Season's Battle Pass is a military-themed Soviet Battle Pass that is heavily inspired by Bohemia's new title, Armor Reforger. This new Battle Pass will give players tons of long-awaited Soviet weapons, camo, and gear, allowing us to finally now have the ability to dress as both sides of the Cold War conflict. I made a longer video covering the entire Battle Pass, which I will have linked below, but I know from a lot of reports already that a lot of people are quite excited about this. Now then, the next major addition with this update is a new gun. This gun is called the Barry M12, and it's a new purple or military grade secondary SMG. It is a new Italian SMG, and gameplay wise, it has a fairly accurate bloom and moderate fire rate, but also fires 9x19 Parabellum, meaning it should be expected to be a 4 shot, much like many other rifles in the game. I predict that this will be a decent weapon, but it isn't too powerful to the point where it will change the meta up too much. I think it's just going to be a very solid secondary, possibly one of the best secondaries in the game. Following that, we have a new consumable. This new consumable is an adrenaline shot, which is used in stamina-related actions such as holding your breath and sprinting. It makes you sprint faster than usual and recover stamina faster, but the exacts of how this consumable works is something I'm still working on figuring out. It seems pretty convoluted and complicated, so I, I want to have more time to test it before I really come out to you guys and say here's exactly how it works. What I do know for certain, it is a very strong item, um, kind of to a worrying degree. Um, and I, I know it's going to be very useful for players who run away, players who give chase, uh, and I'm, I'm just going to need to get more uh, data on it to be able to say just how dangerous it is, but it is something that I am not exactly the largest fan of. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking we may see some mid-season nerfs to this item already. Next up, we have a graphical change. As with many other major updates, this update arrives with a graphical change. Um, this one seemingly is in focus on an increase to render distance, at least on the Xbox base. I don't know what things look like on the Series X, and I don't know what things look like on the PlayStation or Nintendo, but at least on the Xbox base, we can now see much longer sight lines, as is apparent from the screenshots and footage I am showing in the background. Um, it is going to make it easier to snipe on these maps, and I don't think that's a real issue because snipers are quite dead frequency-wise, so a tiny buff to the frequency shouldn't really be a massive issue. And also, it looks fucking beautiful, so I'm not complaining too much. Maybe we get some new screenshots for some new screensavers. However, the graphical change is not the only quality of life improvement that we are coming with this update. To start off, we have the addition of the new seasonal challenges. These are going to be challenges that work much like daily challenges, however, instead of resetting at the end of the day, they last the whole season. These challenges, much like their daily counterparts, can be re-rolled for different challenges if one so desires. However, aside from the normal rewards of these challenges, this one also has the special seasonal rewards to look forward to. At this point in time, we don't know what the special seasonal rewards are, because they require you to complete 50 challenges total to actually unlock them. So, really, we won't know for some time. But I'm curious to see what they may be, and I'm curious to see if we get some new cosmetic, or you know, some special crate, or something. We're just going to have to wait and see for that one, though. Alongside these new challenges and rewards for the UI, the challenges have been cleaned up further, and now we'll show you which type of challenges you are working on, either the seasonal challenges, the tutorial challenges, which are called story challenges, or the daily challenges. So it just kind of looks nicer, and you'll know where exactly your challenge is coming from. This update also got some tweaks to shelter improvements. A while ago, I stated that if we are going to add more shelter upgrades, then the existing shelter upgrades have to gain some value first, in order to prove to players that it is worth it to fully upgrade the existing shelter before we start to add more on top of it. And, and what did the devs do? You know, that's exactly what they did. They reworked the way the shelter works, so lots of different upgrades are now much more worth it. Um, to give exacts on the changes, I had to use the Vigor wiki to run the numbers and compare things, so I can't promise that my numbers are exact because the Vigor wiki is extremely outdated. However, it's going to be pretty close and it's going to give us a general understanding of exactly what changed. So starting off, we have the wood log. The wood log is now going to produce lower materials at lower levels, but at max levels it's going to produce three more materials. So basically, it's, it's a motivation to get to the max level. However, getting to the match level is going to be easier because it's now cheaper to upgrade the wood log. 
Um, to give an exact example, from level 6 to level 7, it costs 200 less wire and 700 less nails than it did before. From there, we have the box of herbs. The box of herbs is going to produce more materials overall at most levels, which is just going to make it more worthwhile as a whole. However, the cost for these upgrades have gone up. 80 more parts, 90 more fertilizer to upgrade from level 6 to level 7, 70 more of both to upgrade from level 5 to 6, and 50 more of both to go from level 4 to level 5 as well as all these upgrades now requiring wire that previously wasn't needed for them. Rat Traps got a major buff, producing almost double on all levels from what it was producing. However, it's not really like the crafting costs got increased by the same margin that the item got buffed, because in this situation, the amount of fertilizer needed doubled, but the wire and nails needed got halved. And like, it is noted that nails are now required to craft level 8, but at the same time, this is a not too much more expensive upgrade for double the efficiency. Smokehouses also got a major buff, increasing their modifier at max level from 40 to 50, and their fuel cost is going to be slightly higher for tier 5 to compensate for that. But the nail price is halved as well as the addition of chemicals. I'm going to go a little faster with the rest since I think you guys get the general trend of how this works. Box of plants got a buff but not to the same level as wrap traps. However, their prices to craft went up by far more than rat traps, requiring two times as much wire, six times as much metal parts, three times as much fertilizer for tier nine than was previously required. I think this is has to do with the fact that it has a higher capacity. It's something you can leave for multiple days, while rat traps are not something you can leave for multiple days. Um, next, we have outhouses. Their buff and price change is very similar to the smokehouse. Water distillation was unchanged, but chemical distillation received a 4% higher max buff. Utility Room actually received a nerf to all tiers besides its max one, with its max having the same as before, but all of its lower tiers are now weaker. And finally, the scrap box, much like the rat traps, got a major buff, now producing more than double the original rates of production, albeit at an increased price. Across the board, the rates of change between levels have become more standardized. I hope this clearly articulated the shelter upgrade change that occurred. It's quite a large deal and a big step towards making future viable shelter upgrades an actual, you know, endgame mechanic and a form of progression. And I wanted to make sure I clarified as much as I could about this aspect. Moving from gameplay changes, we do have a couple of monetization changes. Starting off with the addition of instant crafting of guns using crowns. I see no value in this feature, and I don't think it's going to change anything. I know some people are getting upset about it, but I, I literally think it's the same shit as when we got instant crafting of shelter upgrades. It's just kind of pointless. Um, but I do know a lot of players have been asking for it in dev streams, so it's not like the devs are just you know charging us money because they want to. It's because people are begging them to be charged. I don't understand the bigger community. So, in addition to this, we also got some new weapon skins, four new sets to be exact. The first three, Evron, Splitter, and BGS, can actually be seen on certain guns in the Battle Pass. They are available in all the remaining guns throughout the rest of the store. The final one is a bit cheaper, and it's the new Hibiscus skin. This skin is f***ing beautiful. It's the most beautiful skin I've seen in the whole game, and I, for one, am a huge fan of it. If it's been in the game before today, I don't know how the hell I didn't notice it in the past. Also in the realm of monetization changes, we know this season's premium bundle is going to be called the Fallen Crown of Daisy, but I quite literally have no other details about it at this point in time. Finally, I want to close out on confirming that we aren't going to be getting this season any new cassettes or an SMG overhaul, at least according to the information I have at present from the devs. Personally, these are massive blows for me, and I am very sad to hear both of them. I think if this were not true, this would be a season that I think overly positive about. However, due to their absence, I think in my opinion, this season can't really be one of the greatest. To finalize... I'm not exactly the most excited about this season as I have been for others. I mean, I think it is cool to get a new battle pass. I really like the new battle pass and its theme, and I really do like the shelter upgrades being a feature in this update. However, besides for that, there's nothing really else of major interest to me. I like the new SMG, but it's it's a purple SMG that's, I don't know, I just don't feel too excited about it. Um, and I think it's, it's a sad that we aren't getting new cassettes and we aren't getting the SMG overhaul yet. And should those things come out in mid season, they're going to be amazing. But at the moment we don't have them. So I can't be as excited about this update just because of things that might come for midterm. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm still a little bit excited. I'm really excited for the battle pass at the very least. And I know I'll be grinding for that, but until this releases for the public, that's really all I've got for you guys. Um, until next time, this has been Chris Beast, and I hope to see you all well next time. Thank you.